Hey guys, this is Phil. And I'm John from World's First Cinema. We're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up guys, Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I am hanging out with World's First Cinema here in this, this room feels like we're in some kind of dungeon. Yeah. I kind of dig it. That's the goal, man. <laughs> I kind of dig the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, how are you guys doing? Congrats on the new release of the EP. Thank you. Yeah, doing good. Yeah. yeah. Just had a nice breakfast sandwich, so mm. yeah, feel good. Awesome. Congratulations with Palm Reader. Uh, this is the first taste for me. This is my first experience of, of this project with you guys. And I instantly fell in love with just the cinematics of, of this uh, EP as a whole. Cinematics, vocals, the violin. I'm a sucker for violin. And that the yeah, fact that that's on there was incredible. I want to dive in and talk about that creative process between the two sure. of you and like yeah. what that how that kind of like kick started when you guys started like to think about you know, creating a new track or even creating this EP as a whole. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as the creative process goes, like, I mean, we started this whole project just roughly based on making something a little more cinematic, like mm. inspired by films. It actually started as a project that was just meant to be uh, sync music. So like pitch directed for TV. Yeah. And, films, and then it's kind of like spiraled out of control and became a whole band. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of our creative process, like usually starts on keys and violin and melodies and like I get a kind of a blueprint going and then uh, Phil takes all my mess of ideas and turns it into not nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we kind yeah, of pass it much. back and forth until it's done. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, what are your comments on this situation? Pretty, pretty spot on. <laughs> I think that's pretty much wrapped it up, yeah. Yeah. Any no, I think I'm good. <laughs> so for me, John, this is the first time listening to you or getting to know you as an artist. Like I didn't know anything about you prior to that. Phil, I've worked with you previous with my old project, uh, Punk Videos Rock, with your early totally. ages of, of neck deep. So I've, I'm familiar with the stuff that you've done and, mm -hmm. you know, the different paths that you've done, like yeah. in the music industry. How do the two of you kind of come together in like that initial process of like working together for the first time? Like, was that like a... Did it feel like a natural progression or did it feel like you guys had to like get to know each other a little bit more before you started to collaborate? Not really. I mean, we, we just met through a mutual friend, like a friend of ours was having like a hangout kind of game night at his place um, locally. And we met there and kind of hit it off and was chatting and sort of getting to know each other a bit. And then obviously like followed each other on social media and checked out each other's stuff. And then yeah. kind of casually was just like. I was trying to do some sync stuff and was like, oh, this dude's got a really great voice. Like he could be cool to do some stuff with. Like, let's just have a session and see what happens. I mean, I feel it's a very like LA thing. You know, it's like everyone's kind of just yeah. here doing that similar stuff. So to, to meet someone new and try and make some music with them isn't a particularly strange thing. Um, yeah. I, feel, I feel like it was, it was cool because it was nice and natural though. Yeah. Like it really, yeah. I was doing my own thing uh St. Clair like my old project and I think I was kind of ready for a change but I was fully invested in a solo project y you were looking for like kind of side mm. stuff or like you know just more creative stuff and like I said it didn't start as a band it was like okay it's yeah. you and me now and we're in yeah. a band it did not start that way it just sort of naturally like slid down <laughs> and we had yeah. like a handful of songs that we felt really cool about like we, we had our first session and we wrote like two songs in the first session both of which ended up on the first EP we did. And then we just kept doing that for a while. And then we had this yeah. big group of songs and started having ideas about how it could look and feel. And then it was like, oh, okay, like this is this is something we're going to do, you yeah. know? Yeah. How did you go from that first EP, which had like a more of a darker kind of mood to like this more brighter cinematic kind of EP with Palm Reader? I think it's a natural just progression of our style, you know? Like when it first started, it was really really overtly cinematic and you know based in sync yeah. and like yeah. kind of made for tv inspiration and as become as it's become more of a band like our style has just evolved you know into making those kind of songs yeah, yeah. you know and the branding's always going to change you know even in the future it's you know, gonna, always going to like i would see it as like the first ep was really cinematic the second ep was like dark and rocky and then palm reader ep is like much more melodic and emotional and i feel like those are the three big kind of key areas of what we like to do so yeah. it's kind of like we've done an ep of each flavor yeah. Yeah. and now the album we're going to do that's coming out next year is kind of be a combination of all of them sort of thing yeah. 
What is that process like between the two of you though? Though because you give us this, I mean, it, it, it's different styles throughout, as you mentioned, throughout each yeah. EP. So do you come into the idea of like today we want to kind of work on this kind of style or is it also another natural progression where it's just like you start working on something and that's what kind of happens? Yeah, it's more like individual songs. Yeah. It's like, here's a cool little start of an idea. Like we're not really thinking about the tone of it or where it fits in any record. We're just yeah. like, yeah. here's a cool song. And then we do enough of them that like, it's like, oh, we've got like 12 now. But if you put these five together, that feels like a really cool EP. Or yeah. we'll also write, I mean, 25, 30, 40 songs to come up with the six or seven that end up yeah. being released. Yeah. I mean, we won't like so, finish them and write them all the yeah. way. But like, you know, just little voice memos or little demo starts. Like, uh, and then it might be a case of like, oh, we've got like five that sound like this. So now we need one that's a bit like this. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at some ideas and be like, oh, this one kind of feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we yeah, it's always kind of fluid, I think. With this EP, uh, you guys produced all tracks except for Love You Now. Kyle Black has stepped in on this one. Um, what was that process like with Kyle Black and why did you feel that like that only one song well, would fit with, with the different so I, We had already done Love You Now and it was fully produced and it wasn't a different song. It's just we wanted to go and like recut vocals for yeah. the record just because, you know, Kyle's a really awesome producer in general but vocal producer and has this beautiful studio we just wanted to like polish it and feel like it was really fresh and new and love you now is probably the most like rock orientated song we've done so it's mm. very guitar drum based and i'd done all the guitars but like he has way nicer guitars and yeah amps than me. so <laughs> yeah we were like let's redo the vocals and then recut the guitars and while in that process a few little things got switched around and stuff so he ended up yeah. kind of being a co-producer on it but yeah, it was fun. I, we also recut like all the vocals for the other songs with him too. Okay. So we were already in there for the record and he was, you know, helping us make the dream happen. And then, yeah, we ended up taking parts of Love You Now apart and putting it back together with him. It was, yeah. It's yeah. it cool. It sounds really good. Love You Now caught my eye because, or my ear, because I've never heard a roller, co roller coaster vocal like you did with. Love you now. I, like, I was like, yeah. that was dope. Like, I really dug that. <laughs> yeah. Was that like a first take thing, like naturally just happened? Or did you guys actively try and do something different this time around? Definitely not first take. <laughs> <laughs> that song's it's first take in the sense of like the writing of it. Oh, yeah. I don't think yeah. there was ever like another. That's, yeah. There was just like this, that kind of melody you had. And well, that's actually the. Like, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's that a, was so yeah. old. Too. I know that was like one of the we, first songs we ever wrote. I remember I was in uh, we were in Guitar Center and we were like, yeah, I mean that song was one of like the first patterns blueprints that we ever yeah. put down, and we were in Guitar Center and I was like, Yo, I like got this crazy idea, and I went over to yeah, one of the demo on the pianos piano. and I was like, and. Yeah, I mean, we've oh, had yeah, it forever. Sick. It reminded so, me of like Journey or something. It's like very. I was like, yo, yeah. if we produce this, just like an old like eighties rock power ballad. That yeah. would be so funny. Like, and that's yeah. truly it. It's like actually yeah. kind of weird that we've even done it in a way because it's yeah, it's ridiculous. But that's it's like this fun. whole project though. Yeah, it's like we think it's fun, <laughs> so I don't really care. Like, yeah, rock opera sort of thing. Like, yeah, and it had all these big. You know, we added all these big kind of like cinematic dynamics to it. Like yeah. it starts so small, and then it gets so big, and then it goes small, and there's all these big like impacts yeah. and string arrangements and it's just adhd it was just like a, it was honestly kind of a goof i just think yeah. it sounds like journey or yeah. something and i'm like that's dope yeah. we had way too much fun with that song i i i i think there are a few more of those in our future too and maybe even on the album like some just crazy like, yeah run away kind of you know yeah goof songs um but yeah no i mean it was always written that way you know per your um comment yeah because it was yeah it was just that's how it was always written. That was such so. a moment for me. Like I had to like rewind it and like <laughs> listen to it again. I don't know what it is. It's something new to me. Like, so, you know, it was, it wasn't your, your typical, like I'm going up and then I'm going back down. Like right, it was yeah. definitely a roller coaster on that. Um, so, and then I, I guess it's safe to say that's probably my favorite song on the, on oh, the EP, but I'm also gravitating, uh, towards Palm Reader as well because of the violin that you listen to, uh, on the track. What is it? Uh, what has it been like incorporating strings into your music? Is th is that oh. something that you kind of have to work around the strings uh, during the writing process? I, I feel like, um, I mean, like ironically, I use strings more in this project than in my solo project, mm -hmm. um, and they're just everywhere. Like even if they're not the focus, yeah. uh, like in Holy Water and the verses and stuff, like 
they're freaking everywhere. Yeah. Like they're, you know, panned left and right throughout the whole song and like there's pads and swoops and the strings going on like crazy. But I feel like when we use it as a lead, we kind of treat it like it's like a different alien guitar or something like that, <laughs> yeah. you know? But it's cool. I feel like in terms of how we use it, it's a cool sound and it makes us a little bit different. And yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. And then on stage, like when you play it live with an electric violin, it's like really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. how does, it's fun using it like a rock instrument, you know, yeah. and like yeah. when doing weird processing on it. I mean, we have like Palm Reader and SOS and Red Run Cold that kind of follow that format of like, you know, the drop per se. We don't, not necessarily a chorus, but more like a, an instrumental chorus and just, yeah doing weird sounds yeah yeah how does incorporating the violin impact your 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 writing for the guitar um it's weird it, <laughs> yeah it doesn't it doesn't really because yeah like i don't really i don't necessarily think in terms of guitar when producing for wfc because it's like so and every song is different so it's like hard to say because you know it, that that's the thing about this project it's not like a pop punk project where every song is guitar drums and bass like that's the format like we have songs that are just piano or like weird like electronic <clears throat> songs and yeah i don't know palm reader is a perfect example yeah totally yeah, yeah I, I don't i think of it in terms of like the production of the song rather than guitar and then like when we're yeah. working on it, like sometimes there's really obvious you know for example like young beast a song that we have on our second ep yeah which is an instrumental hook again it's just like a big guitar riff i remember john had that like it was like a piano riff. It was just like the do, 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 the melody on piano. I was like, oh, dude, that would be such a good like guitar riff. And then yeah. we did it and it was like, oh, yeah, that makes great sense. But then Palm Reader was the same thing, but it's like, oh, that melody sounds so good on piano um, or violin or whatever it is. So, yeah, yeah. I've never know. I've never felt like there's any competition there. Mm. There's still time, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there can't be competition because I don't give. I'm, I'm not a guitar guy. I'm not a guitar guy at all. Yeah. I love playing guitar. I like guitar, but I'm not. I don't give a shit. Like I, I, because I get to produce the stuff. I'm having so much fun making it sound cool. I'm not thinking about me playing it on stage. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I actually would wow. rather there be no guitar. The less guitar I have to play on stage, the happier I am. Do you even want to be in this project? I absolutely want to be in the project, but I don't want to have to be responsible for. Like the insane parts all the time. Yeah. I just want the song to sound dope, <laughs> guitar or not. You know, sounds you like know, you don't want to do anything. Instead. I'll just do yeah. violin instead. You got it. So, <laughs> I mean, my other question was going to be like, how do you separate the artist from the producer? But it looks like you don't even want to be the artist in the first place. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. It's more. It's uh, more that like I want to be. I want to view it. Like I want to be able to see it and hear it. Yeah. Like I'm in the crowd of it. Cause I love it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to hear it from the other side. Right. You know what I mean? Well, st I mean, Phil just doesn't have much of a stage ego. Like you just don't really, that's really which I is mean, really nice. That's really nice. Cause I have a huge stage ego. <laughs> so like, that's what yeah, he's gonna I mean, do. yeah, you gotta, that's the like, whole, yeah. that's the whole point. Right. I feel like, like now you got to listen to my vocals. Now you got to listen to my violin. <laughs> 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 no, but like some people, you know, and I, I've had a lot of experience with that. Like where, you know that whether it's bass or drums or whatever it's like my instrument is drums and i care about the drums i don't care about the song i care about what i'm gonna play on this part and that's a very like rock alt scene kind of mentality with a lot of people and i get it because it's like if you're not and i get it because when i in my old band i wasn't producing any of this stuff so the only thing you are responsible for is the part you play so you want it to be fun you want it to be interesting you want it to stand yeah. out and you want to be able to yeah. flex but like when it's only two people and we produce everything ourselves, like I'm making the song. So I get to listen to the whole thing and be stoked about how it sounds. So like when it comes to actually playing a part, I don't care what I'm playing. Yeah. I care about like how that feel. Yeah. yeah. I want the feeling of the song. I couldn't give a f if you can shred on guitar. Yeah. It just doesn't interest me. <laughs> like, yeah. How does that song make you feel? How does it sound? And like, what's the, what's the like world that that song creates? Like, yeah. that's the thing that makes me stoked. Which is why this is such a fun project because it's yeah. so catered towards that type of. It's such mentality. a cool canvas. To, yeah. We've yeah. we've like set it up in a way where we kind of just get to do whatever we want, mm. which is something I never felt like I could do with my old project. Right. You know, it was like way more pigeonholed. Totally. You know? Yeah. It's not, I wouldn't even necessarily say pigeonhole. Just like, you know, you, you start a band or you release records and it, and it feels that sound. You know, if if you like, yeah, you know, if a band like Saint Clair like suddenly 
fucking you know super heavy rock track it would be a bit like wait what yeah but it like, doesn't we've work kind of been able to yeah. you know mix it up a bit which is fun yeah yeah, yeah it's been do fun. you guys feel like you had any challenges during the creative process the writing or the recording process of, of this ep <sighs> no i don't think so no i mean we've we're still at a point where we we really are just doing whatever we think sounds fun. Yeah, like every th this is I the hope first never changes. Yeah, yeah, this is the first record that went out on Fearless, obviously, but it was already done before we even signed, and they had already heard it and loved it. So there was no. Yeah, when we wrote that, the Palm Reader EP, all the tracks they were done ages ago, and like we weren't thinking about like mm, does this fit into a thing. We were just like, yeah, we'll just write bangers and the ones we like. Yeah, you know, we always think about <clears throat> the record and how it feels to the branding and all the thing, but. Yeah, you know, we have yeah. written songs. It doesn't happen often. But we have written songs where we maybe do it and we look back at it and go, that's a really cool song, but it doesn't really work for us. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah. generally it's just like, do we think this is cool? Yeah. Then fucking then it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just like, uh, we've never really had a creative process problem, really. I feel super lucky. I've, I mean, everyone's got an ego and like yeah. and stuff, but I feel like our situation, we've always, I've always thought of it as like, you know, little jigsaw puzzle pieces that just happen to be the ones that fit next to each other. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like our strengths and weaknesses balance really well. Like either one of us can tell the other one that like, that's a terrible shitty idea and we're not using it. And there's no like hurt feelings. Like no one gets butt hurt. It's just, it's just smooth. It's yeah. we've never had that. Like we don't really butt heads in that way. Mm. You know, what about like lyric wise? Like, was there like a particular lyric on a song that was giving you guys the hardest time to kind of finalize or even figure literally out what that chorus might be? All of them. Yeah, <laughs> literally the every lyric. The yeah. most. That's um, my least favorite part of yeah. making music. Yeah. yeah. John's and it's, really good yeah. lyricist, so, but I'm a for it. So it's a lot of like, <laughs> he'll be like, dude, this verse. And I'm like, yeah, no. He'll be like, no, what do you mean? It's so good. And I'm like, it's gibberish. I don't, I can't have Sounds it. like a guitar. Yeah, it sounds like a guitar. I hate it. Um, but then in doing that, we agonize over it. And I do, I am yeah. proud of all our lyrics. I think our lyrics are yeah. something that we, we you know, sh help us kind of show how much we care about it because we never really just throw lyrics in. They all try yeah. to paint a really solid, cohesive story and vision and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So Or have like, you know, intertwined lore and stuff. There's a bunch totally, of fun, yeah. like Easter eggs kind of strewn about all our songs. So. Yeah. yeah. Now the experience I get listening to the album or the EP gets me excited for a live show. Uh, are there any plans for that anytime soon? Like, are you guys looking to do like a proper tour for this EP or do you guys want to wait for the tour for like more of a full body of work? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. next year will be when it really happens. Like obviously we're right at the end of the year now. So we, we don't have any shows this year. Um, we're kind of just deep in working on the album. Um, but yeah, we'll be, you know, announcing an album and stuff at a certain point next year and we'll be touring all around it. Hopefully, yeah. What do you think fucking now? this project like as much as it was sort of written with cinematics in mind, it's like, it was always meant to be theatrical. Like it was yeah. written for the stage for sure. In my mind, like every time we write a song, the like first, second, third thing I think about it is like, how would this look on stage? Yeah. How would this feel on stage? Like this, how does this come off? You know, it's impactful. Live. It's impactful. Just looking at the yeah. videos with like you guys did in the theater. And I'm just like, whoa, like that's really sick. Like, I feel like it's going to be massive when you guys decide to start touring it. Yeah. I mean, we, we obviously we've only done the one tour so far, but it went great. And it was a real like proof of concept moment for us. You know, it was a great tour and we got to, you know, show what we do live. And it was like, oh, shit. Every night was very like, oh, man, this is weird and cool. Yeah. Um, you could see people's faces they're just like what is happening like who, who are you like <laughs> yeah, why are you wearing <laughs> why are you wearing cloaks and why are you playing violin yeah <laughs> like, why is there so, a candelabra on they're like, so <laughs> cool you know <laughs> people kind of like okay yeah you know <laughs> For the for the tour we did is when we were like right in the middle of like releasing all of our stuff for our second EP and we do all these like instrumental kind of cinematic scores of the songs as well and we play them live and they kind of intertwine the songs and we had this like voice actor this old grizzly dude from scotland record these like poems that we wrote and he yeah, honestly he forgot like about a wizard that. and yeah. so like we walk on stage like this old scottish man reading poems over like orchestral yeah. wearing cloaks so yeah. it's like yeah it's like a thing That's and everyone's like what's going yeah. on everyone came there for the struts and they're like <laughs> <laughs> what's happening <laughs> what is this cult yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm Big looking forward to energy. that. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Congratulations with the ZP. I'm excited that I got introduced to you guys. 
Uh, I'm bummed that it's just now, but I'm super excited that now is the time. So it's, I'm, it's just the beginning, really. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. You guys be sure to check out World First Cinema. Uh, the EP is out now, Palm Reader. And thanks for watching our Front Row Live.